That is what the flame sensor in one of my furnaces looks like right there. For some reason I pictured it as being a lot bigger. You gotta remember, it's just picking up milliamps, so... That's what the inside of my furnace looks like. Furnace getting serviced for the first time in four years. Trying not to get in this way. All right, I'll be back. Wanted a video of my furnace is all taken apart to add to my um, video collection. You'd be surprised how many views some of these things get. Oh yeah. Especially the videos of the heat pumps defrosting. Those got a lot of hits. Yeah, they're, that's part of when we do heat pump tune-ups. We put it in the defrost. It's cool to watch. Especially when they steam. When they start steaming, yeah. The steam show. That's why, see, most people have their hoses shut off in the winter time, so you can't really clean the coil, you know? So what I would do for that's these. What, that's what I do with the, you. Is I would bend these down so that bar doesn't come out. Bend which part down? This thing? Mm hmm. Was that easy to do? Because a lot of times, even though you have it in, you'll open your furnace up and then you'll see it'll be, it'll be out again. So you're talking about cleaning out the, the outdoor coils, right? Yeah. Oh well, yeah, I do that all the time during the summer. So what you do, see now, it won't come out as easy. Smart. You just need, when you're ready to change it, just get And that won't make it hard to put the cover back on or anything? No. Perfect, so. But, um, so what I do is I put the coil cleaner on. Well, like Viper Bright? Well, I usually use a non-aesthetic one. More like an evaporator coil cleaner. In the summertime, we use... You know, the, the condenser cleaner, it's real acidic. But um, I'll spray it down with a coil cleaner and then I'll put it through defrost. And the defrost naturally rinses the coil. That must be cool. Yeah. So what do you do on most heat pumps? Just touch the, um, the wire to the defrost board and it forces it into defrost? You'll see on the board there'll, there'll be two pins. It'll say force defrost. Here. Kind of like a force shutdown on my laptop. And you take a screwdriver and you touch the two pins together. And when you touch the two pins together, it forces it into defrost. Now I saw my, my uh, buddy who's an air conditioner technician, he used the acidic coil cleaner on an 06 pane and that was cool to watch. Yeah, you gotta watch some of that stuff so strong it'll take the paint right off so you gotta really, you know, dilute it. The paint off the air conditioner? Off the coil fins. There's like if you have a black coil, mm. the fins are black. It looked pretty diluted to me because it didn't damage the unit. Yeah. One time we crushed a decommissioned round one in a trash compactor. <laughs> it lives. It's firing up right now. Yeah, see that orange glow? That was your HSI, your hot surface igniter. Now your burners are working on. And so we know how to put the filters in. So we know for sure before I wrote on the tag, I wanted to know. Second floor. I'd be 
obviously these are just single stage, right? So yeah, these are... If you had multi-stages, you would have did more pressure switches. Make it those three stages, you have three pressure switches. Those two stages, you have two. So yeah, um, just found out something today. I knew the air conditioners outside were both 24,000 BTUs. The furnaces are both 40,000 BTUs. the upstairs one next or the downstairs one next yeah we're gonna do a couple tests on this one take an amp draw do a couple things the mechanic is doing the um, tune-up on the downstairs unit so it is 69 on the first floor of the house right now and I'm going to turn that up so it is so the uh, first floor unit turns on all right, just turn the, you know, it's 74. All right. The mechanic is checking the, um, the temperature of the air coming out of the um, register and also checking for carbon monoxide levels. Um, the upstairs furnace was completely safe, no carbon monoxide, it was blowing 108 degrees at the vent in my bathroom. This is the first floor furnace that's running right now. That won't harm anything? Nope. It'll clean your pump, it'll clean the tubing and everything. It's the instruction manuals. Oh good, I did put the, um, the other owner's manual back down here. I thought I misplaced that. Not that it really matters that much because they're both the same exact model of furnace, but still. And it always seems that every single consumer product ever made has something about the state of California. Cars. California finds, yeah, cancer and everything, don't they? Yeah. I saw a sticker that in, a, in the window of a Mustang in Monterey, California, something about automobiles contain materials known in the state of California to cause cancer. It's getting kind of annoying. Yeah. Furnaces, cars, pretty soon they're going to think dog hair causes cancer. Yeah, they're crazy. So if we were going to take your gas pressure, we would use the same thing, and we would just Look at it like for this one, this would be your incoming gas pressure. You would hook that in and then hook it to your thermometer. And then your outgoing would be right here. And that would tell you your outgoing gas pressure. That's only if it's the service yeah, calls problem. Like if this was real black inside or charred or we had a reason, but everything's run fine. So. I think carrier, even the base model ones are built like tanks. Yeah. It's a bit of a unorthodox setup, but still a good furnace, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, what my one of my neighbors did actually, they um, they have a two and a half ton air conditioner for a 2,040 square foot house, mm -hmm. and they didn't think it was cooling off the second floor to their liking, so they put a three ton coil and furnace in. Yeah, well, you should resize the duct work too. Times the duct work just won't be able to handle it because it was made for that two and a half time. Now I've heard from an expert that the modulating or um, the variable speed furnaces, if you install it in an older house and you're replacing a system, right. that they can adjust to the size of the duct work. Is that true? Yeah. The, the, the modulating gas valves actually will be there. And I hope to God this house has the right size duct work for a two ton system. You think it probably does, right? 
the builder go cheap? It's hard to say without doing a static pressure test and everything. Well, it's been, you know, it, it keeps the house at 68 in the summer and in the winter, so everything seems to be working fine. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I love about dual zone. You're able to shut off the downstairs unit at night and just have the upstairs one running. Right. That was the big appeal. Restart. Also, um, I don't know if you noticed we'll see that. See, it'll start blowing in a second. You see how this little clip came, came out there? Out, yeah. You gonna fix that? Try to fix it. Not much you can do once those clips come out. It's like they're tough. See, that's your HSI glowing orange. And then you'll see what they ignite once you'll hear a click. The eighty percent efficiencies have those exposed. They're not in a little right. box like that. Now you just heard it click. Now your gas is on. Is that what makes it more efficient? That it's not exposed like that part of no, it? No, it's that, that it's condensing. So an eighty percent isn't condensing. Correct. Eighty percent is condensing. Because my aunt has a house that was twenty percent of the gas you're burning is going up the flue, whereas these have what's called a secondary heat exchanger. Now the old furnaces I heard are only like 50 or 60 percent efficiency. Yeah. So half of your your gas is going up. Half going your up the flue, whereas these 90 percenters, you know, so with the secondary heat exchanger, you're getting a lot better. Um, you're literally putting your money up the chimney. Yeah. I actually broke that by mistake once when I was inspecting something in the furnace. That was. Jesus, like 2010 or 2009? That's been like that for a while. Is that way your door doesn't fall off? Hmm. All right, so um, when we take that off to um, put in the new filter, like what do we put on there? Just we put any kind of tape on there. We just hold it there. It doesn't get hot or anything. Duct tape should probably do. Yeah. And then we'll sit to go. Look at all that HVAC spaghetti back there. Yes. HVAC spaghetti. So we are... Okay, so both of my furnaces have a clean bill of health. The technician ran some diagnostic tests, um, cleaned the flame sensors, put a sensor in the... Um, the registers, the vents on both the first and second floors and made sure it was heating properly and also made sure there was no carbon monoxide being pumped into the, the vents and everything was working perfectly. There was no carbon monoxide on. Upstairs was blowing 108 degrees. I forget how hot the um, downstairs one was, was getting. So everything is in perfect working order. Furnaces have clean flame sensors. They just got brand new filters. Everything was checked out. So basically, these furnaces are ready to take on whatever Mother Nature has to throw at them this winter. And um, the um, contractor will be coming to service the air conditioners like in March or April. So I'll make a video of that too. They're going to like check the compressor and the Freon charge and all that. And I also got some um, helpful pointers about do-it-yourself type of maintenance like running bleach through the condensate pump. And also, long story short, everything in the furnaces works great, but the determination is that the builder, the, the contractor, the builder and ho the builder hired did not do a very good job. Like there's no airflow issues or anything like that, but the furnaces are installed too damn close together. It's gonna make certain things difficult, but everything works. So yeah. Everything works. 
thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Out. This has been a Stamped Octagon production.